Hello survivors, hi family and friends. This is Roy from Bootsy Sweetheart's Guide to Life and Other Disappointing Experiences with a question. How did a bottle of wine, red wine, a wine glass, and a coaster inspire this next craft project? Stay with me and see what happened. After another successful wine and cheese party, it's time to clean up and put everything away. And as we go to pick up in front of that one person who you knew was going to make a mess, you see it there. A coaster on the side and the wine glass off the coaster. <laughs> Here's one way to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Keep the ring off the table. This project turned out to be a lot more fun than I thought it might be. And in the end, you get a useful product. Now, I saw this pattern uh, a while back and thought that I'd take it out and give it a try, but I forgot about it. And uh, going through things, I found it and said, gee, this is perfect timing to share this. You know, when I was a kid, Coasters were the big thing for all kinds of liquid beverage. Make sure you put that glass down on the coaster. Well, how often do we forget? So um, this is nice because the coaster never leaves the glassware. Now this particular coaster is appropriate for stemware. Uh, it does not work well <laughs> on um, other glasses. It's made with five pieces of fabric. I'll show you that in a minute. And you just snuggle the base of the stemware into the fabric cozy here, this little coaster, and it goes wherever you go. Follows you around. Now the instructions on the sheet that I first saw, on the uh, project that I first saw, were made with five and a half, no, five inch squares. Five inches. Uh, and what you need is a base piece and four five inch squares that will create the overlapping flaps. Very, very simple cutting because you just have the five inch. I sometimes use a cardboard um, template. So you fold them in half. I'm using some primary colors so you can see the contrast. You fold them in half. I take them and press them. So I get a nice crisp fold and don't worry too much if there's a little bit of um, a little bit of wonkiness because it's a very forgiving pattern and you place the first rectangle now which is folded in half and I'm going to pin this and I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute lining up raw edges of the base fabric. In this case I'm using a canvas and for the back, well broadcloth and just ordinary 100% cotton on the um, top of the coaster. The heat is causing, uh, we put the heat up, you know, a while back and it's causing such allergies. It always does. It'll go away. So now I'm, again, overlapping the first sheet, the first piece of fabric, with the second piece of fabric, pinning that. I'm going to remove this pin. 
because I want to pin them together. I don't want them to slip and slide. Now you'll see that my accuracy is off here, but that's there's a little bit of an edge. But I wasn't so careful in cutting these because I've learned that uh, you can be a little haphazard. Be very, very sure that the folds are towards the center. Be very sure that the raw edges match up because if they don't, you have to pull the whole thing apart or in my, my, one of my trials, I had to actually throw it away. So I pin it again. Now we're overlapping, see? Just to go around, take this pin out and pin them together again. Now the last one is a little tricky, not really, but you, that has to go here, raw edges to raw edges. Now we can't leave it like this, so we have to tuck it under the first rectangle like that and pin it with my Jeff Gordon NASCAR 24. Oh, let me pin that in more, keep away from the stitches. And you want to go back and move this pin. I'm moving the pin for two reasons. Number one, I don't want to have this fabric move around. And number two, I don't want to accidentally sew over it because I can't see it if it's underneath. Actually, I didn't know how the primary colors were going to work out, but it's kind of fun. I like the look. Then, what we do is just simply sew around the entire square. You can, they suggest a quarter of an inch uh, seam allowance. I made mine a little bit larger just because I you can see some of the edges don't line up exactly, so I don't want to take a chance on a quarter. And actually, this for me, this turned out bigger than I needed. I'll show you in a second. Uh, but let me take it to the machine and sew it up. Now, this um, magnet, this is a magnet from the home store. And... Um, it's very, very strong, and I put that on the probably three-eighths line, so I have a little wider seam, but this doesn't move. This does not move, so you can um, put a little weight against it. You can put a little pressure against it, and it's not going to uh, move at all. And it keeps your seams very, very straight. So I'm just going to sew right around. This is important, if you see. I made a mistake here, but being careful. The um, flap went over the press of foot. I don't know if you can see that from... The angle of the camera. I gotta find a better place to put the camera. I sew right off. I don't pivot on things like this. It's just my habit. I'm double I'm back tacking where the intersection of the stitches are. Now here again, you see you you want to make sure this doesn't this doesn't go under the press of foot. <laughs> Now we take the pins out. Now you'll notice here, for those of you who are a little concerned that you can't be that accurate, it's a little off and I don't mind. If I, if this were a regular quilt square, I'd be ripping out, ripping out, ripping out. But this was a little careless, so. 
Now, what they did, uh, what the instructions on the two or three that I've seen was to cut the, um, trim the edges with pinking shears so they don't unravel. It's very difficult. I'll use the big pinking shears. It's, we have a lot of layers of fabric, so it can be a little difficult to get through, but uh, take your time. You don't have to do this. Um, this is just a little extra, I guess, insurance that the seams are not going to open up from unraveling. Just go around Now we are basically done. All we do is turn, flip all of these pieces over to the other side. So just put your fingers in and flip. And flip. So you get something that looks wonky like this and just get your point turner and your corner guy out. This is just a regular bone folder. And there you are. I'll hit this with the, an iron. There are two layers here so you have, sometimes you have to go under the top layer and then go under the second layer. To, to get a corner that you like. Don't push too hard. You don't want to come out the other, the corner with your bone folder. So I'm just cleaning it up a little. And there we go. Now we'll hit this with the iron. Get rid of some of the little whiskers in a minute. But this is the whole project. At least it is the way that I saw it done. Um, so you just take your stem wear, nestle it in there. And this is kind of pretty for a party, uh, a happy party, <laughs> with a lot of different colors. Now, it's one little thing that made me think I want to redesign this so I make it my own um, and actually it's two the, here's where the glass ends you know it's, you can see it there there's a lot of space here and the second thing is because all these meet at the center not that it's a big deal it just doesn't sit as flat as I'd like it not that I'm not that fussy I am that fussy sometimes. It depends on the thing. Um, so I changed it up a little bit. And what I did was just shortened these top four um, rectangles and still kept the five inches on one direction, but I had four and a half on the other. So what I do is cut four and a half by five and along the long side I fold it in half lengthwise. So now what I'm getting is a piece of fabric that's a little shorter towards the center. It's going to make a hole in the center, but
but I like the way, and then of course press this sharp, I just like the way it sits. The second thing I did, I discovered, oh, <laughs> the second thing I discovered is the uh, sewing and pinning can be made a little easier, believe it or not, if I use glue. So get my old dependable glue stick out. And instead of pinning, I'm going to glue the edge. I see how sloppy I was here. Oh, I'm sorry about the focus. Sloppy I was here. That's okay, because you see in the end it gets cut to trim, to size. And I Now, because I'm going to have to tuck the, this piece under here, I'm only going to glue from the center to the end. This is like a basting stitch. And I also do it with basting stitches. So I put that glue on the edge, raw edge to raw edge. I'm going to glue under here just a little and then glue on the top. And this one Sorry about that. There was a car. I don't know whether you heard it. A car alarm went off. Um, we go here. Okay. Uh, green. You just want it to stay down while you sew. Try to stay right to the edge so you don't uh, get the glue. Uh, on the needle when you're sewing, although it does, it's very forgiving there too. Now you see what's happening here? There's a space opening up. No space here. Space opening up. And that's going to leave a little room for the stem. Now the last piece is going to go over the last piece that we put down. You see what I almost did? Almost raw edge to raw edge. So this is going to go here. And this has got to go under the red. Otherwise you get an undesirable uh, pattern. So we lift this up. Now we'll finish cementing this down. <laughs> um, this glue and this glue is very strong once it gets set. I like to, oops, I got to get the top here. Wherever the edges meet another fabric, the edges of one fabric meet another, you got to glue it down. Now, I have no pins to worry about, and it's going to hold together. I'm just going to hit it with an iron just to make the glue dry a little quicker. I'm not moving it around too much. I'm sort of just dropping the iron on it. <clears throat> okay. And I'll take this to the machine. And let her rip. And here's the second one. Looks big, doesn't it? But when you fold it out, it uh, is fine. Now this one I'm not going to pink because really it's a lot of uh, layers to go through. Let me try the... Uh, let me try... I don't want to use this cutting board because it's brand new. I use an old one. I'm going to try the pinking rotary cutter. This can be a bear to work with, but when it works well, it works well. See, that worked well. Now, see, here's the difference. No hole, a little hole. Plus, I've made this a little, it's still big. It's still big. It's still five inches originally. 
and uh, we just get this turned inside out. Again, make sure you uh, get the corners from both the, in this case, under the yellow and under the green. Under the green, see, you could still, you still got to go under the blue. Under the blue. Then under the red, this corner could be a little bit crisper. There's a lot of layers in there and I didn't trim the corners all that well, but still turned out nice. And that's the project. And now let's show you some of the other things. Now see what's nice about this is it has that hole in the middle. It won't... Uh, bunch up. So I like, I happen to like this better. Moves around a little bit, but uh, I guess there's a use for both. I'll make mine here this way. I might suggest not a half inch. So instead of five inches and four and a half, I would do five inches maybe in four and three quarters. I don't know. This is kind of fun. Now, this the purpose of all this is to keep your table dry. So in this case, it's broadcloth on the bottom. You may want to use some sort of water resistant fabric for the bottom. But some caveats. If you're doing one that has the hole in the middle and you have fabric that's only printed on one side, you have to make a decision let me get you my all my little adventures here that I've been doing. Here's one. <laughs> oh, trial and error. I you I put the fabric on the wrong side to right side and when I was constructing it. So the pretty fabric is on the inside. And the back of the fabric, the wrong side is what you would want to see. So you have to be careful when you're putting it together that the this fabric is right side up. So you're going to be putting the um, you'll be putting the rectangles right side up because they get folded back if you remember. The other thing is you're going to have, if you're using a fabric like this, you're going to have the um, wrong side facing up through that. Here's one. Here's another one. This, I love these. These are pretty. Here's the pretty fabric. And I top stitched. You can top stitch. That helps a lot. But because I had that square open, the wrong side of the fabric is showing through peekaboo that hole. Now it won't matter when you put the wine glass or the stemware on it, um, but that's the wrong side. So if my suggestion, if you're concerned about that, is to just use solids like here. I'm going to make one here. Isn't this pretty? So I used a solid black for um, for that one. And it, here's where the theme comes in to your party. If you having a party and you want to keep to a theme, to the colors of what your um, table settings are or your party themes are, use the same fabric and make a bunch of these. They make great gifts uh, to bring for house when you go visiting during a holiday or birthday or celebration. Uh, if it is for holidays, use a theme fabric. And here again, because I'm, I left the hole in the middle, I used a solid. <clears throat> um, 
he is a fun one with fishing. Um, and here I have the pretty fabric is on the back and the wrong side is on the inside but you don't even notice that because I use the original dimensions with the uh, full five inches but you'll notice this one's smaller and I'm liking the smaller ones these seem to be too big the five inch ones for me here's a big glass let me see this is probably more appropriate so you would even if you're going to give these gifts you would even maybe give them different sizes as well um, have them all set up the other thing is if you've been to parties or given parties where you have the little charms on the uh, glasses the stemware so that everybody knows which glass is theirs I mean years ago we used to have blood blood brothers and blood sisters now we don't even want to share uh, a glass nor should we share a glass uh, absolutely not but sometimes it gets difficult to tell where your glass was left hmm. not that it's happened to me but uh, anyway but so this is more appropriate. It's almost to the edge. Can you see it's, it's almost to the edge. So the different size glasses require different size coasters. Um, keep them with one color. Is four different colors of the same pattern, which is pretty. Um, then I went a step further and I made round coasters. You can fuss with cutting out these round folders, round coaster pieces. I don't. I get my trusty box of circle templates that are all marked three inch, five inch, take the four inch out. I use pie plates, anything that has that's circular that I can uh, make a circle with and I don't have to get the compass out. So what I do here is I sew the I sew the or pin or glue sew pin or glue. I love basting. To me basting is it's a, I guess it's because I grew up around my mom who basted everything. That was what you did in the 50s. Um, that's how they sew. That was the process. And you can pin or sew or glue it. Turn it over to the back side. You draw your circle. And make sure your glass that you're choosing fits in that circle that's probably generous enough could go a little bit bigger and then you just sew around and you wind up with the same um, overlapping and just berth it um, if you'd like I can do one I didn't want to make the video too long I can make a second video with the circles I love the circles uh, here's how they look this is pretty. I like this one. See how pretty that is? Can you pick it up? Um, I would spray these with um, Scotch Guard or some kind of uh, fabric protector because you don't want the uh, wine to stain it when you put it in the wash. And then I made a hexagon one. I like the hexagon. This one's a little for a bigger glass. This is sort of overkill and I made a Christmas one in a hurry because we always get company normally <laughs> Christmas this is uh, 4th of July uh, such fun I think it's fun and one more suggestion is instead of uh, the charms pin a charm to the coaster and whoever gets that 
will remember that they have that charm and that's their glass. And then, and then the, this, you can't see the fabric here. This is beautiful fabric. Uh, if you're making champagne, toasts, this is perfect. Now this one, this one's screaming for a round um, coaster. And you can see the if I top stitch around here, it would keep the glass a little more centered. Anyway, it was something I saw and said I like the idea. I'm going to make a bunch of them. I've already, they just go so quick. Look at, I just threw these together. Not, not really. But I'm having such fun with them, I make a million of them. Um, hope you like this uh, coaster project. And when Uncle Harry comes over, make sure you give him the one that is uh, most absorbent. Because we all know Uncle Harry. Thank you for sticking with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and please stay safe. Please stay smart. Please stay well and stay healthy. And bye for now.